Thank you. So it's my great conference. And as you know that I am an neurologist, so I'm a doctor. So for this uh, uh, presentation, I would like to share my uh, experience from the uh, doctor's view to see the auto automated software in the clinical practice. And my topic today is the automated softwares of perfusion imaging in acute ischemic stroke. So let's move to the stroke area. For stroke patients with large artery occlusion, for, for example, for this patient, so uh, this patient had right side internal carotid artery occlusion. So without the middle cerebral artery and uh, anterior cerebral artery showing here, so this patient had an occlusion here. And the most um, first way, fastest way is to recognize the vessel based on the thromboectomy, like stand retrieval stance. And to retrieve all these uh, thrombus and outside the vessel, then to rec recognize the, the uh, vessels to, uh, in order to improve the recognition, the reperfusion. So based on this technique, from 2015, and five clinical trials, which were all published in New England Journal of Medicine, the Mr. Clean, Swift Prime, Extend IA, Escape, and the Reverse Cat. So these five trials approved that the thromboectomy is superior to only the medical treatment. Uh, the tissue plasminogen antiprase uh, is the, uh, used to be the first line treatment for uh, acute ischemic stroke. So uh, the acute stroke guidelines recommended those patients with acute ischemic stroke receiving IVTPA within 4.5 hours of symptom onset. So this used to be the time window for TPA treatment for acute ischemic stroke. And if this patient had a causative occlusion of the internal carotid artery or proximal middle cerebral artery, and with the NHS score, which is the score to define the um, severity of the stroke, the NHS score of less, less than six, and SBAS score of more than or equal to six, and treatment can be initiated within six hours of symptom onset. So for the whole, these patients should go for thromboectomy in order to um, first improve the reperfusion. And based on an automated uh, software, we called the rapid software, uh, which was approved by the FDA in US. And the diffuse three trial extended a time window from the six hours in the guidelines to the 16 hours. And the dawn trial extended the time window to 24 hours. Now for acute stroke patients due to large artery occlusion, uh, the standard uh, treatment time window for thromboectomy now is 24 hours if, if they fulfill the requirement for the clinical trials. And this table summarized the imaging features of these two late time window trials. So the diffuse three, basically this trial was based on the rapid software. So the left side shows the interface of the rapid software. The purple size, uh, the purple color shows the core volume, the infarct core, which was defined as the relative cerebral blood flow less than 30%. Uh, for this patient was 105. And the green color shows the hypoperfusion, which was defined as the Tmax more than six seconds. And for this patient was 236. So if we use the hyperperfusion volume minus the core volume, then we will get the mismatch volume. And if we use the hyperperfusion volume divided by the core volume, we will get the mismatch volume with mismatch ratio, sorry. So basically the diffuse three was based on the rapid CTP software and to include the uh, select the patients into the clinical trial. And the dog trial, they use the clinical and the imaging mismatch. And the imaging part can use the diff diffusion weighted imaging MRI and to calculate the lesion volume. And the rapid also, they also have the lesion volume based on DWI. So these two clinical trials, uh, mostly the diffuse three uh, was mainly relied on the rapid software. So what is the rapid? The rapid CTP software, actually the rapid has two products. The first one is CTP and the another one is perfusion weighted imaging, PWI. So many the CTP software, they get the approval from the FDA in US and they 
has already installed more than 1,500 centers all over the world. And this software has been validated in large clinical trials. And the main limitation for this software is it's very expensive. So they charge money based on the workstation and the hospital bed numbers. For example, when I was in BIDMC, they charge BI every year for uh, $50,000 every year. And they do not have local service. So they have, um, a, 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 I mean, a center in US. So if we use in China, we do not have local service here. And the rapid, they technically they use the single volume decomposition method, the SVD method to develop the, um, the algorithm for calculation of the CBF, CBV, Tmax, and the TTP. And this is the definition for the core and the hyperperfusion, as I talked before. And clinical in clinical practice, they help create decision making. So for this patient, you will see the right middle cerebral artery occlusion here. And the corresponding perfusion map uh, is just like that I showed before. Uh, so this patient, the core volume was 105 and the hyperperfusion was 236. At all the patients, the mismatch volume and the mismatch ratio was quite high actually, but because the core volume was more than 70%, seven milliliter. So this patient is not suitable for thrombectomy because that 70% 70 milliliter is the exclusion criteria for most of uh, thromboactomy trials, and it's in hunters um, higher risk for uh, hemorrhagic, uh, hemorrhagic transformation. And regarding the performer errors for this software, when we use it in real world clinical practice, a lot of cases showing without any result. And they just show you a picture like rapid data processing failed because of no suitable AIF. This is the arterial input function location was not found. So here is the arterial input function uh, figure and, and this is the AIF and the VOF curve. This means the arterial input function curve and the venous output function curve. So these two parts are essential for the uh, perfusion map and, and the volumetric calculation. If we design the wrong sign for the um, arterial input function. <clears throat> Adult software will automatically give you the numbers of the core volume and the hyperperfusion, but there, there was no sense. So we need to look at the AIF location and the curve. So usually the curve was beginning with uh, uh, at 25, min 25 seconds after the injection of the gadolinia, and they will have an arterial curve and then followed by a higher uh, VOF curve. And usually the AIF location was selected in the normal site, so not, not the occlusion site. So this is the easy way to uh, check whether the AIF um, is correct or not. And besides the CTP software, they also have a PWI, the perfusion weighted imaging software, and they defined the ADC less than 620 as the core volume. And the hyperperfusion volume the definition was uh, the same as the CTP, but this software ha has not been validated in clinical trial, so they did not get the FDA approval yet. And similar to the RAPID, another software from Europe, uh, actually from uh, France, a French software called Olio. The Olio is a, also another uh, automated software which was installed more than 2000 leading uh, institutions worldwide. It has not been validated in clinical trials. So this is the shortcoming for this, uh, the main short shortcoming for this software. And it can only automatically detect one-sided infarct core and hyperperfusion area. So for a thrombo, I mean a cardioembolic stroke patient, they may have similar bilateral infarcts. So from this software, you cannot detect uh, automatically uh, for both sides, you need to change to the interface of the software and, and change it to the another side to see whether the another side also have infra or hyperperfusion. So uh, restrict, restrictedly to say this software is only a semi-automated software. And this software 
because they, they charge different kind of money and rap is much more expen expensive than the old year. So when I was in Harvard, I'm, I'm curious the, um, whether these two uh, softwares are comparable with each other. Can ODEA substitute rapid in the acute stroke identification and for uh, decision making for thrombectomy? So I compare these two softwares in patients uh, which was suspected of acute ischemic stroke. And the rapid, they failed in 4.7% 4, 4 of patients. So without giving any result. And the OLEA failed only in less than 1%. And when we look at the AIF and VOF curve, so as I said before, this is very essential for the perfusion imaging. And the rapid, they fail with poor AIF or VOF curve in 6%. And the OLEA um, with poor, a poor curve in 13%. So, so adding together, usually the rapid failed in around 10% of patients, only failed in 13% of patients. And totally we included 120 patients and the mean age was 70 and 35% of, of them were male. And the time interval between the stroke symptom onset to CTP, the median time was five hours and stroke symptom onset to MRI time, the median time was 30%. And the CTP to MRI duration, the median was 24 hours. So some patients may have infarct progression during these 24 hours. And they have different kind of uh, acute stroke uh, treatment. And we also have the, uh, whether they have successful recognition for these patients. And to diagnose whether this patient has an acute infarct, compare rapid and OLEA, we, we can see that the rapid has relatively only fail sensitivity is less than 50% with very high specificity, almost 98%. Only the default, default setting for this software is RCBF less than 40 as the core volume. And we, we need to compare whether 30% is another criteria. So we also use another um, manual reset to RCBF less than 30 as another criteria for the OLEA core volume. And when we compare these two standards, we can see the uh, RCBF less than 30%, they has also fail sensitivity and a relatively higher uh, specificity. While if we use the default setting, uh, using the 40% in the audio, the sensitivity was very high, which up to 90% and specificity was very low. So how to change these numbers into clinical practice? So look at this imaging. Uh, Rapid always have shown you that RCBF less than 30% at zero. So it means there is no core volume for this patient. So whether this is true, it's translate to if this is only zero, the sensitivity was only 40%. So almost half and a half. So if you see this picture, it means these patients may have an infa. It's almost 50% of chance that this patient have an infa. But if this number changed to 10 milliliter, so this is a positive case. And then this patient was very highly uh, to strongly recommend this patient has an infarct. Okay, because these softwares were designed for intervention, so many of these patients need to rule out those patients with large infarct. So we look at the uh, diagnostic values of this software uh, with the, the uh, gold standard um, diff diffusion weighted imaging. Whether it, um, we use the criteria not less than not less than seventy milliliter as an um, cutoff, uh, because this is mainly the exclusion criteria for most of the thrombectomy trials. And the rapid, the sensitivity reach up to seventy four percent, and specificity was balanced to eighty one percent. And the OLEA 30% uh, was quite similar to the rapid 30% criteria. And the OLEA 40%, we see the ischemic core, the sensitivity was very high, but specificity was very low. So this may cause a uh, false positive based on 40% in the OLEA. And not only we look at the volumetric and diagnostic criteria, uh, diagnostic accuracy of 
uh, CTP with the DWI. We also checked the special match between the CTP core and the DWI MRI infra. So the rapid, they only have 34% of patients with the correct location of the infra. And the OLEA was only was all less than 30%. So this is poor accuracy for the infra location. When we look at these patients with correct infra location, the volumetric correlations showing the rapid was higher than the OLEA, the correlation. However, the correlation was only uh, 0 0.57, which was less than 0 0.7. So it's not a very strong correlation. And not only our study find, found the um, poor correlation or poor care, uh, accuracy between the CTP uh, with the DWI. Another study published, which was published on stroke in 2018, they utilized the Hermes and Extend IATNK trials data. They were trials data. And to look at the baseline rapid and the 24 hours DWI infra volume. And they found that the median volumetric difference was 25 milliliter. And all these patients had a thromboectomy with very good uh, successful recognition. So basically these patients should not have this large infra progression. And 36% of these patients also has the special false positive call. So this is a wrong, mis uh, wrong special uh, designation for the infra. So this comes to the problems for the current CTP automated software. Uh, not only this, pay, this software is charged too much for the consumers without any local service, the most important thing uh, in the clinical practice is the software based on CTP. They had fail accuracy for the infra location and the correlation with final infra volume on diffusion weighted imaging. And they are lacking of the large scale real world clinical validation cohort studies. And in China, that this is very important. Uh, not rapid and OLEA, they were all not approved by the China FDA yet. So we cannot find the um, commercial version for rapid or OLEA. We can only apply for the research version. Um, so this Need you to, I mean, to submit the protocols uh, to the U.S. company, and if they approve, then you can start your research. And if you want to publish, you also need to get the approval from the Rapid Software Company. Um, basically, if we want to develop an ideal software package for routine diagnostic workup in the acute stroke area, we would like this software to be fully automatic and operator independent. We don't need to adjust any curve or any um, input function of the artery. Um, we wish this, this software can generate maps of motion connected perfusion and diffusion parameters and to determine um, diffusion perfusion mismatch uh, for some patients, uh, which we can initiate the tissue plasminogen TPA thrombolysis or thrombo, uh, thromboectomy. And we wish this software can provide maps and the mismatch information no later than five minutes after the MRI scan, because the MRI is the uh, DWI weighted imaging and the ADC is the gold standard for uh, the infra volume and the infra location. And we wish this software to be integrated to existing clinical MR system and to connect to the local communication system like the PAC system in our uh, hospital. And if they can have another communicative devices such as the smartphone, then this software may be more uh, user-friendly in uh, the stroke treatment, in particular in the acute stroke uh, in the ED. And we, wish, we also wish this software can deliver reliable processing results that are comparable to those generated by human observers. And so this is the ideal software package. Um, so we mentioned the, um, the MRI, but all the companies, they achieve, the, I mean, they go for CTP because most of the emergency department, they installed the CTP and the CT, I mean the CT in the ED, but not so many centers perform MRI in the ED. So this is um, the business things. And the problems for the PWI automated software uh, 
accept the um, installation and the software, they, they need to tackle a lot of motion artifacts um, because of the, uh, this is more complex for MRI than the CT. And they also have, uh, such as this rapid, you, you can see here, they, they, they will have a lot of hyperperfusion areas in the cerebellum, like here. So this is a common um, artifacts or, or mistake in the software for rapid. So because of um, the difficulty in developing softwares based on perfusion weighted imaging, there are currently in the whole world, there is no FDA or China FDA certified perfusion imaging automated software. And recently, the Nature Medicine mentioned that the reality of artificial intelligence software in clinical development, they have a lot of problems, such as the missing data, key terms, and definition of these terms. And the model performance and the validation descriptors were highly variable, and they are lacking of the external validation in uh, the outside practice. And no study has a sample size calculation, and deep learning models were rarely compared with the combined approach of assessment of the same data set by the algorithm and the healthcare professionals. So all these problems, they paved the way for the coming of the guidelines. So the Nature Medicine recently republished two guidelines to instruct the development of artificial intelligence um, softwares. So they have the split AI, uh, guidelines for clinical trial protocol. And they, you need to report, uh, follow the consult AI if you want to publish the clinical trial uh, when you're using the artificial intelligence. And we also translate these two guidelines into Chinese, which will be, which will be published in next month uh, in our journal. It's a China stroke journal. And in these two guidelines, they recommended to develop these softwares, we need to follow three steps. So in phase one, we can do a model uh, in on extended data set that contain identifiable, identifiable information connected for purposes. And in phase two, we need to validate and the internal validation and the external validation. And then the software need to test it by the clinical trials. That is the phase three. So based on this, uh, regulations. Currently, there is no software based on perfusion weighted imaging that's following the split AI or consult AI standards. And that's why we need to fix the gaps between um, the perfusion weighted imaging and, and the CT because CTP is not that reliable. Then we need to develop a software based on perfusion weighted imaging. And we use this, the same method. Um, from a paper which was published in 2010. And, and this is also the method for the rapid perfusion weighted imaging. And they use the um, deconvolution of tissue and the uh, convolution of the tissue and the arterial signals. So this is the paper. And if you are interested, you can refer to the uh, full test. And we have this the algorithm flowchart. So for the perfusion weighted imaging, we uh, connect the motion and time. And then uh, with an algorithm, which was published uh, in the paper in the rapid software, the methodology paper. And we also following that algorithm, we convert the MR signal to transverse reactivity. Um, we detect the automatic arterial input function. And after collection of the linkage of gadolinear DTPA, we use the deconvolution method to uh, derive the AIF curve. And after adjusting for the chemodynamic parameters, we will uh, get the RCBF, CBV, MTT, and Tmax numbers. And this is the interface that we um, mainly uh, derived based on the MATLAB. And when we translate to Python, and this is the interface that we, we have in China now. And here we showing the ADC less than six and 20 for the infra core and the Tmax more than six for the hyperperfusion. And we also automatically calculate the mismatch volume and the mismatch ratio. And for this software, because it's mainly um, uh, served for the Chinese companies and Chinese hospitals. So we have 
packages, language packages in Chinese, and we also have the language packages in English as well. And here we also have different criteria for the hyperperfusion, uh, including the Tmax more than 10 seconds, eight seconds, and six seconds. And after derived software develop, after development, we need to validate these patients in internal data. We connected 92 patients and we compared the rapid and our software with the ground truth. The ground truth was set as the um, as the hand drive, uh, sorry, hand write um, volume on the ADC and the DWI. And when we use the brand admin curve, we, we found that the rapid and the Tiantan software was, was very closely with the uh, ground shoes. They were all non significantly different with the front ground shoes. And um, we also used the Pearson correlation to test the correlation between the uh, the software volume and with the ground shoes. This was hand write um, ADC or DWI volume by a manual, manually check. And we, we can see that the correlation was um, all more than 0 0.9. So both rapid and our software are very closely correlated with the ground shoes. And for the further steps, we uh, has already connected 6,000 patients from uh, the external hospitals. We will do external validation with very um, full set of the clinical information as well. Um, we will use this software, go for another clinical trial in China. Uh, this trial uh, has registered in the clinicaltrials.gov. Uh, is the trace three trial. We will investigate the efficacy and safety of TNK and versus placebo in patients with, in the late time window in China. And for this software, we will also evaluate the collateral flow and the blood brain burial dysfunction uh, in the future. And these two functions are very important for the patient's clinical outcomes. So to summarize, the CTP automated software still has their own problems, not only the expensive prices, but also the fail poor accuracy between the CTP and the ground choose. Um, and the perfusion weighted imaging is needed in the future. And our software will follow the Sprint AI and the Consult AI standard to develop this software and validate it in the external cohort and the clinical trials. And we will further uh, develop the collateral flow evaluation and the blood brain burial dysfunction evaluations in the future. And thank you so much for your listening. And if you are interested in my topic, you can feel free to contact me by this email. Thank you so much. Thank you for your presentation. I actually have a question. One of the things that you raised was that uh, there is a lot of delay in actual approval by FDA or the Chinese counterpart. And in the end, uh, these innovations do not reach patients uh, rapidly enough. Uh, what do you think can happen uh, that, so that uh, we have this uh, process being accelerated? Thank you so much for your question, but it's not quite clear for the, uh, the, the last sentence. Ah, okay, let me repeat. Uh, do you think that uh, medical societies can do something, can take action, so that uh, there is a more um, education or acceleration of the process of uh, turning these uh, new innovations into uh, practical outcomes for patients? Yes, this is a very good question that we, we are doing uh, here. And uh, actually, we are striving for, per, um, I mean, to promote the software uh, usage, clinical utility in the clinical practice. So many we do first thing is to promote the research version of these softwares in China. And the second thing is that uh, we uh, give a lot of lectures and to help uh, the hospitals and doctors to understand you need to use an automated software and 
to um, screen patients in the late time window. So basically, currently actually for the rapid software, they do not have to, I mean, they did not have large real world data here. But in, in China, so for example, for my software, we are having a lot of internal data and we have, um, uh, I mean, a national collaboration with 1,276 hospitals in China now, and we are connecting data from those hospitals. And we wish we can validate our software and to use the data to speak for ourselves. So, in, and then we need to apply for the approval from the CFDA, but actually this, this also needs one or two years actually. So after the clinical trial, maybe this software can be um, popularly installed in China. Thank you. Thank you for your answer. This is great. Yeah, yeah on this, maybe uh, I can have a few words of comment. Uh, actually, in China, there's a kind of the regular path of the app application for the approval of the technologies. There's also a green channel to approve the technologies. If the innovation is great, then good technology can go through the green channel that can be reviewed and can go in a fast track. But all the procedures has to be completed, but they just go fast track. So uh, there's a, a way to get good technology through. Uh, uh, yeah, we should, uh, we have more really innovative uh, technologies can get approved and fast and uh, get to the real patient. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I, I actually have a question to you, you too. Uh, you talk, uh, talk is very great uh, uh, about the uh, perfusion, uh, CT perfusion, and the uh, PWI uh, uh, MRI perfusion. Uh, it's a uh, very good uh, insight. Uh, for the, uh, let's say, for the uh, CTP, that's uh, uh, for CT, and uh, usually uh, when people have, have the emergency case, people go to CT maybe faster, from my point of view, and go to MRI can be uh, slower. So uh, apparently you are uh, promoting using PWI to, uh, uh, to, to identify the, uh, the problem or the uh, difference between the uh, infarct core and the, the uh, hypo, uh, hypo uh, how to say that? The, the, uh, yeah, uh, so uh, the, the, do you, uh, can you tell us about uh, the, you know, when do you use the uh, different technologies? Yes, so this is true and, and it's also a common problem in the whole world. In the emergency department, most of the um, emergency department, they, all, they only use the CT and plus CTA and CTP to detect patients whether they had occlusion and whether they have a mismatch based on the software. But actually, as I said before in, in the talk, that the CTP, they did not identify uh, the true infra and the location, they have a lot of false positive. And the gold standard for the infra identification is the MRI. So we need, that, that, that is the thinking of my um, group, that we need to promote the MRI and the perfusion, uh, MRI, uh, I mean the perfusion weighted imaging in the emergency department then this can exclude the stroke mimics and to determine whether this patient is a stroke patient and to save the resources, to save the medical resources. So I, in China, we have six centers, uh, six big centers. I mean, in China, they utilized the uh, MRI and perfusion weighted imaging in the ED. And it only takes 15 minutes for the patient in the ED to uh, take the whole MRI uh, sections. So they only included the, the, the diffusion weighted imaging, uh, ADC, frail, and SWI, and the perfusion weighted imaging sequences. So in this uh, green channel, like green channel for stroke, they did not um, do TI, T1 or T2 for these patients in, in the MRI, uh, in the emergency department. So 
I found this is a very useful way to uh, improve the outcomes and the quality of stroke management in the ED. So then I discussed with my boss that, you know, that Professor Yongjin Wang, then we need to improve and to promote this uh, treatment model in different uh, China Chinese hospitals. So maybe in the coming two or three years, we will see a lot of hospitals that utilize the MRI and the perfusion weighted imaging to uh, management the stroke, to di diagnose the stroke. This is very correct, uh, correct. So there is no false positive based on the, based on the MRI. Yeah, um, one more uh, small question. Uh, from the uh, from your point of view, you are the doctors use the software, uh, use the technologies. Uh, and, uh, as you mentioned, there are rapid, uh, there are some uh, softwares like uh, rapid, rapid and uh, only and other uh, softwares. And now you also de develop uh, softwares by yourself. So uh, can you see this uh, 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 from the development side? As uh, for us, for uh, the uh, uh, image processing or some technology person, uh, uh, do they still have uh, uh, the, the big task to do the uh, for for the uh, for this kind of uh, so, uh, this kind of algorithms or the technologies, or uh, it's a uh, it's a kind of already uh, you know, good. Uh, of course, there will be some challenges, but from your point of view, what can a uh, technologist uh, get into uh, this, like uh, motion correction, imaging processing? Yeah, yeah actually, I think this uh, area is in the very beginning. They still have a long way to go. And although we are, are tracking the imaging um, based on the perfusion weighted imaging, um, but it's not, we, we cannot say 100%. Uh, correct between the ground truth and the, our software. So there is still a gap. So we need to, um, and the algorithm, com our computer uh, engineering, engineers, I mean, and to help us. So as you know, that I'm, a, I'm a just a doctor. Uh, I do not have a background from the engineering part. So we welcome a lot of the engineering uh, engineers to coming into this area and we can I mean, to work like a group and to develop more accurate identification for the infar. And as well, you know that the rapid, they only design um, CBF less than 30 as the core or ADC less than 60, 620 as the core volume, the core size. But this has not been very dated yet. They may have another criteria. So I think from the engineering part, we, we may have different kind of algorithm to test it. In, in this area. Yeah, and as well, the machine learning has not been utilized in this area yet. Maybe when we have a lot of good examples for perfusion, we can do machine learning uh, in the future. Yeah, that's great. Thank okay. you. <laughs>